Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Caldheim draft here on the channel. Before I dive in, I do want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, click that bell so you get notified when I post future videos, and leave a comment in the comment section down below with your questions or feedback. Also, if you want to support my content directly, you can do so via the Patreon at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and in the process, gain access to my card-by-card -card grade spreadsheet for Caldheim, which I've actually actually already updated once based on my experience with the cards so just a bunch of cool stuff over there so opening things up our rare cosmos charger four mana three three flash flyer doesn't need that much to be uh, like a great card and this does have extra upside of letting you foretell your cards for one less nice so they only cost one and they can be done on any player's turn so that's also nice um not like a ton of upside there but it's decent upside and it has foretell itself which means that it can ambush things as early as turn three so i like this card it seems quite good to me what else is in the pack though um looking at the uncommons this card's not one i'm a fan of i'm not a huge fan of rootless you the fact that it has to die to get the card is tricky and there's not a ton of six toughness creatures uh fall the imposters good but it's a gold card so i'm not going to prioritize it and then in the commons the best common i think is Cyril's packmate uh i really think this card's great and then there's also code spell cleric which is a card that I'm a pretty big fan of, but I haven't gotten a chance to play with yet. We're going to start off, I think, with the Cosmos Charger. Flying has felt pretty good, as it often does, but I think it's pretty close between this and the Packmate. So I wouldn't fault someone for taking the Packmate at this point. Okay, so moving on to Pack 2. Uh, one thing I've liked doing recently in just all my drafts is avoiding uh, gold cards early, so that's just a strategy I've been employing. Uh, just because no reason to risk it when there's such powerful monocolored cards. In this pack, we see a lot of good single-colored cards. There's Bound in Gold, which is a great white common. Feed the Serpent, which is a great black common. Frostbite, which is a pretty good red common. I don't think it's the best one, because I think that spot is held by, uh, whatever, the Demon Bolt, the three-mana deal for. So this is pretty solid, but I think I would probably take Feed the Serpent over it. Uh, also, Feed the Serpent works with Cosmos Charger, because when you have multiple things to do at instant speed, you can pick and choose which is best. Port of Carvel is not going to wheel, but definitely an interesting consideration. The uncommons aren't great. Provoke the Trolls is a 4-mana deal 3, which is just much worse than Feed the Serpent. And Replicating Ring is less mana dork. I think I'm going to take the Feed the Serpent. I haven't gotten a chance to try out the black decks. Uh, Bound in Gold is also a fine follow-up to Cosmos Charger. Uh, one thing I've realized recently is that a lot of these picks are kind of toss-ups. They come down to preference, come down to what you want to experience in the draft. And I think it's okay to just... Once you've made a pick like that, you kind of remember what was in the pack, but then you just kind of let it go, and you're not going to beat yourself up over it. Like, if there was a great white card in the pack, I wouldn't beat myself up over it. This is a totally defensible pick. I think it's going to work out pretty well. Okay. I will also say that there is a slight reason to bias towards white, because blue-white foretell is an archetype, but that's not enough to make me want to uh, take a card that I think is slightly weaker. Okay, in this pack, Giant's Amulet is a card that I've been pretty impressed with. It also goes with the Cosmos Charger, so that's nice. Uh, just the Hexproof has been really nice. The 4-5 body is hard to punch through. Uh, Scorn Effigy is a card I'm a little bit lower on than I was earlier in the format. Ice Spine Pillar is good, but it does require you to have enough Snowlands to activate it. So you want to have like 4 or 5 Snowlands in your deck. Probably 4 is where you'd be able to play it. But I just don't prioritize Snowlands very highly. It just puts you into a competitive space that you don't really need to force yourself into. So here I think I take the Giant's Amulet. After the Amulet, I think I would take the Ice Spine Pillar because it is still high upside. And then after that, I would probably take Shimmer to fail because the rest of this pack is a little bit weak and I could leave myself flexible. Okay, so now we have a real reason to draft Snow. I think the Ice Spine Pillar is a good card uh, for, um, like, if you have, like, a couple of Snow cards. But this is another, like, card. So we're seeing another Snow card. I guess they both require similar amounts of Snow Lands to be good, like four or five. You don't need to be, like, swamped with Snow Lands to make that card good. So I guess I uh, misspoke a little bit there. Carter's Vicious Return is a good card. It doesn't go with my blue cards, but it is good. But again, I uh, don't really want to prioritize gold cards here. Frostbite can be good as well. Uh, I generally like sticking to one color. I've got a couple of blue cards already. There's also a Snow-Covered Island in this pack, so maybe we could take the Avalanche Caller. Or we could just take something more generally good, like a Struggle for Skemfar. I think we're going to take the Avalanche Caller, though. I think it's high enough upside. Eh. I'm just going to take Struggle for Skemfar. I, I don't really love prioritizing snow cards. Even though we're seeing a few of them, I think it's going to work out fine. And now we take Dwarven Hammer. We have seen a couple of Frostbites, but I think Dwarven Hammer is really good too. 
This card's just the best card in the pack, I think. It just makes all of your creatures massive threats. Plus 3 plus 0 and Trample has a huge impact on the game. And this card was really good when I was playing against it. Ice Tunnel could be good for my, like, if I'd taken the Blue Snow card. But, again, I I don't really want it. I don't really have a commit of a color. If I had taken the Blue Snow card, I would take Ice Tunnel here. But then I'm just kind of locked in for no reason. Like, sure, I have some decent cards. But if I'm getting a 5th pick Dwarven Hammer, what could I get 6th pick? You never know. Well, now we know. We see it right here. Um, and we see a couple of good cards that are not really blue-black necessarily. I mean, Jarl, Jarl of the Forsaken is fine. The Scary Firewalker is also nice. Ruined Crown is a bit of a gamble when you don't have a rune. I don't think you really want to take it if you don't have a rune, because there's not really that great of odds that you'll get a rune that you can even play. So Firewalker is a fine pickup. Uh, we haven't really seen black being super open since we took the Feed the Serpent second, so I'm much happier to move into a red deck here, I think. Disdainful Stroke is decent. Code Spell Cleric is also good, but my cards just don't really play well with Code Spell Cleric, and I did just take a red card, so getting Dwarven Hammer to go with it. Pretty nice. Um, what else? This card actually seems like it could be solid in the red-black aggro decks, because there are some Berserker themes. Well, the disrespect of Behold the Multiverse imp compels me to take it. So, like, you can imagine a draft where instead of taking the, the Giant's Amulet, we took Ice, whatever, and then we take the other card, what's it called? Um, the the Avalanche guy, and then we have a couple of snow cards, and then we would have a couple of ice tunnels maybe, and we're playing like blue black. But I think our red blue deck is going to be pretty good because it looks like blue red is relatively open. We see a couple of decent red cards here. There's a couple of decent green cards. Black isn't really looking open, but we would have kind of been priced into playing black. Wow, another card with vicious return. That's wild. Um. Black hasn't seemed open, though, even though red-black might be open. We haven't really seen any good black cards. I don't really count Wither Crown as a good black card. Craven Hulk can be okay as a, like, giant enabler if you're playing red-blue and you care about giants. I think I'd rather have the Immersturm Raider, though. I don't love a 4-4 that can't uh, block alone in a lot of these decks because I care more about defensive bodies. And this is still just a fine card. It's not, like, anything too special. But I'm never really going to miss out on a Craven Hulk, I don't think. Okay, so now you see this pack that wheeled there. All the cards are blue or red, which is kind of wild. And I even gambled on Struggle for Skemfar in case green was wildly open, but it looks like blue's open. Run Ashore, I can probably get one later. I'm not going to really rely on that. Raven Form, I can definitely get one later. I don't think it's very good either. This card's not particularly good. Ulithiaric and Seekers can be okay. But I think I'm just going to take the Seize the Spoils. There are some situations where I would really actively want to Seize the Spoils, whereas all the other cards are kind of take it or leave it. And the situations where I'd want one are if I get a card that's really nice and worth splashing. Here I think I take Provoke the Trolls. It's not the greatest removal spell in the world, but it is still removal. Uh, and I think Haggai Mob, Haji Mob, however you say it, is just a little bit clunky. It is a pretty solid 5-drop, but... I already have a couple of like expensive spells. This is a five drop. We're not going to be playing black or green most likely, but I like getting a removal spell. And it also has some random upside in the late game. Well, now we get the ice bind pillar late, so do with that what you will. Lithiara Kinseeker or Cinder Heart Giant. Or I could just take a Skull Raid. I'll just take the Kinseeker, I think. I'm not going to really need a seven drop. And we get a Hagi Mob anyway. I don't love Mists of Lidyara. It's a card that I'm fine playing one of, but multiple copies get a little awkward. And having a decent 5-drop is okay. It's like a nice top-end card. Disdainful Stroke can be good. It works well with my Cosmos, my Behold, my Provoke. I have some instants I can hold up. Last pick green card. Interesting. Well, unfortunately, the rare we opened is miles from our deck, like as far as you could possibly be in that we've never had really cards of those colors we haven't had any white cards at all but this card is really powerful just make a 4-4 kill one of their creatures and hit them for eight pretty great uh what do i want out of this pack though there is this is one of the worst packs i could have opened i, I am playing red blue they both both colors seemed open to me there's not even a snow land that i can take that's in my colors um, though getting a red blue snow land would have been kind of a, the dream so 
I'm going to take here a situational card that I might want to have access to one copy of, but that I don't want to prioritize. So here I'll get a run ashore, because sometimes you want one copy of this, and then I'll probably wield a raven form, because sometimes you want one copy of that. I don't really ever want multiple seas, the spoils, or things like that. But run ashore can be okay in your red, blue, like, flash decks. Punished for taking that one. Um, this makes a little bit of sense, because if the person passing to us was in white, getting past a bunch of good white cards would make sense, because we didn't see any white either. We're just going to take Craven Hulk here. I don't love it as a defensive tool, but it's better than taking a second run ashore. I think maybe maybe there's a deck where you just chain run ashore. It's like you get to six mana and then you just put the same card on top of their library and it like time walks them over and over and over. I think we'll try to wheel that though. We'll try to get just a four four for a deck. Maybe we'll have some giant synergies. My water bottle is empty. Okay. So this is actually interesting because it does work with in, with changelings. We do have a Lidyara Kin Seekers, which we could play to help enable this. Because you can just make a changeling indestructible. Which is interesting because changelings have all creature types. I think I'm just going to take the Inga Rune Eyes though. It works really well with any removal spells I get. And Scry 3 is a lot. This card's probably going to wheel. This card's probably not going to wheel. So the Snowland is not my right colors. I don't have any snow payoffs except for this, so I'm not sweating it, but getting to play this would be pretty nice. This has been a horrific pack for me. Uh, strategic planning is not great. I don't think I've really gotten a good card this pack, which is weird because I don't think I was passing a lot of good blue or red cards. Maybe I passed a couple of red cards early, or they opened a good red bomb or something. Pilfering Hawk is sometimes playable if you have enough Snowlands. I don't really have any right now. Raven's Warning isn't great, but Augury Raven is. This card's like just a 1-1 flyer that draws you a card and gains you two life, which is okay. You're generally not going to love the third chapter because you don't have great cards if you're not playing, but it can sometimes do things. I'm just thrilled to get an Augury Raven. It's the perfect card for me. Just a nice little two drop works with my Cosmos Charger. Fearless Liberator, it's a two drop. It can attack. I have some, like, even if it just attacks and makes one token, it's really good. It's a two mana, two one. Bind the monster is removal. I have one removal spell, a counter spell. I am lacking in removal a little bit, but I think this card is just powerful enough on its own that it's worth playing. You don't even need to be an aggro deck, it just makes them, like, not want to attack you. As it, they're, if they're an aggro deck, they don't want to attack you because you'll make a free 2 1. And now we get another Giant's Amulet. One of the things I love about Giant's Amulet is it just brick walls the ground. It makes it so they have to do something, and then you can win in the air with an Augury Raven or a Cosmos Charger. I don't love the Caller again. I don't really love prioritizing the Snowland super highly because I'd rather take good cards from my deck. Not that this can't be a good card, but like, this is a card that's good if you take four other cards and maybe involve hits in power level, whereas this is just good. So Scary Firework is also a pretty solid option. Ooh, hmm. Now this is interesting. I have very minor snow theme right now with one card that might care about snow and maybe the potential to get more. Berg Strider is going to be worse than the Fjord because I don't have any things anyway, but Mistwalker could be okay. It has some potential. It's a flyer. It, like, is just a massive defensive body. I think I'm just going to take the Mistwalker over the Fjord. And then, as I was saying, the Raven Form Wield, if I did ever want a copy of that. I think one Mistwalker is a card that I've been undervaluing, so I wanted to make sure I corrected that undervalue. There is an argument for taking the Fjord just because I have so many playables already. So I could see that argument. Like, I'm going to make playables easily. So why would I take a Mistwalker? But I think Mistwalker, a lot of people are really high on the card, and so I want to get more reps with it as well. Just don't want to take. I just want don't pass. Don't want to pass any blue cards. I also am just not playing snow cards, so this card's most likely not making it. And Mistwalker might be above the level of replay. Like it might be the same level as a Volatile Fjord. So getting to have another chance to play with it could be good. And also, if we were trimming cards, there's a couple cards that I probably wouldn't want in this deck, so having a couple more playables is nice. Depart the Realm can be nice as a little trickery. Ow! 
that really irritates some people sometimes when I go Ch -ch -ch -ch. They're like, oh, why are you doing that? It's so irritating. So, Cauldring is if you are playing black, blue, and this is if you're playing green. So, I'm not any of those. Though, I do think Cauldring is quite good. Here, what do we want? There is a Bloodline Pretender, but what types do we have? We have two Giants, four Berserkers. I think this card's just good. You play it. You get some synergies with all of your other cards that care about creature types. Um, and then you make it grow over the course of the game. There's also a Carful Harbinger, but I think I'm higher on this card than the rest of the world, and so I can probably get that later. And I don't really need two drops. I have enough. And maybe I'm over-prioritizing the Harbinger. So that's something to keep in mind as well. When you might have a bias on a card, maybe it means you're taking it too highly. Like if you always see it late. Maybe you can also gain a little bit of an edge by taking it later. So Dwarven Reinforcements makes two two ones. My deck has kind of a split focus right now. It's got like these defensive tools, and then it also has like some nice aggressive tools as well. I don't love Dwarven Reinforcements. I think Axe Guard Cavalry is just a solid two drop. I kind of want to try out the Raider's Carve. It works pretty well with a lot of my cards. Like a lot of my cards have three power. I'm going to take the cavalry. Maybe I'll wheel the card. Bind is fine. Removal. I'm relatively light on removal. I have one mists, which isn't great. I have a bind now. I have a provoke the trolls, but I didn't get any premium removal, sadly. I might want to try run ashores. I'm going to maybe experiment with that. Jeez. Rune of Speed is really good with the uh, two copies of Giant's Amulet that I already have. Gives it plus one, plus one haste and hexproof while it's untapped, so it's guaranteed to get its attack in. I think Augury Raven is just more important for my deck, though. It just takes to the skies, does good stuff there. This card's really good, but I already have two of them, and Augury Raven's really, really powerful as well. I think they're at least close. And having more multiple Giants Amulets, they do fall off a little bit. Well, now I have to take Squash. I would love Glimpse the Cosmos, because I do have enough Giants to make it consistently great. But just having it, this is basically unconditional removal in the format, and just having access to that is so important. So I'm taking that over Glimpse. And now we get another copy of Immersturm Raider. I think we're happier to have Immersturm Raider than Seize the Spoils. Because it's a creature that can trade off. Wow, a couple of Narfis. Hey, we got a Volatile Fjord. That's nice. Because if we look at our deck, we have 25 playables. We're going to be cutting something, some things. And so this is just going to help us cast our spells easier. Now we can think about what we want to cut. Probably can cut Disdainful Stroke. Probably can cut Mists of Lidyara. Um, and then run it like this, I guess. I kind of want to try running multiple run ashores because I feel like sequencing those together could be really good. And I, the card has a lot of potential. I think I actually at least want to play one and maybe play both. Berg Strider, not great in my deck. I haven't really tried the Raven Wings. I'm just going to take another Cavalry, I think. So my deck is more of an aggress aggressive deck. But this card is still fine in an aggressive deck. And this card is actually better in an aggressive deck because then the bounce is more relevant. You can put two things away. So what would we do if we wanted to bias our deck to be as more aggressive? We have a lot of the cards. Mistwalker is still fine in our deck because it can attack in the air. The pick, not really what we're looking for. These Hulk is nice. The Inga Runeyes isn't great for our aggro plan. The hold is just so good that I think it's still probably worth playing. I don't want to level myself and not play my incredible cards. 
Raiders carve. Hmm. I'm not going to want multiple to part the realms. Okay. And also it turns on my squash and stuff. Rune of Speed is fantastic in this deck. I wouldn't mind a run amok because I'm attacking so much, but Rune of Speed is great on my two giant amulets. So I like it for that reason. Okay. So building this deck, we're going to want to make sure we bias towards the aggro cards. So Inga Runei probably gets the cut. Wow, Tormentor's Helm could actually be okay in this deck. Okay, so we have 15 creatures. 44 cards right now. These are both 5 drops. We have multiples equipments, but these are more like creatures than equipments. Depart the Realm has a lot of upside generally. I think we can afford to cut the Inga Runa. I think it's worse than a 4-4 in our deck. I think Helm is going to be pretty good. The Giant's Amulet is a 5-mana 4-5. It's not a great attacker. I think we at least want one, though, because it is still nice for like making sure our opponent can't use Sorcery Speed Removal on our key threats on a turn, and it works well with the Rune. But it is much better in more controlling decks. And then I kind of want to play Run Ashores. I think it could give my deck a lot of extra reach. So if I am playing Run Ashores, I probably don't need to part the realms. Even though there is synergy with Cosmos Charger with those. I think I want to play my Flyer Foretell cards. But Hold the Multiverse is close, but I think it's still worth playing. It just gives you a lot of extra fuel, even in the late game. Provoke the Trolls can actually do some work. Help me hit them out of nowhere with a Haggai Mob or something. I really want to try out Double Run Ashore, see how that does. How many Berserkers do I have? I have seven Berserkers, so this is going to be a four mana three five a lot of the time. Still probably not worth it. Hmm. This Mistwalker is looking dicey, but I want to run the Mistwalker to see if I'm missing something. It can also pump itself. Maybe I do cut the Behold. Okay. I think I would either cut the Behold. I would probably, if I was trying, if I didn't want to test out Run Ashore, I would probably cut Run Ashore. Um, and maybe I'd even play like this Giant Samulet over it. But I really want to test out the Run Ashore, which makes me want to cut this Behold. Yeah, we're going to run it like this, I think. And then we're going to cut one island for a mountain. <sighs> Looks pretty good to me. I think uh, the deck probably has some like different angles it could have gone for, but this one looks pretty solid, and we'll see how it does. Before I get to the matches, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support me over at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, especially those who support me at the credits level. Your support helps me continue producing high quality videos on a consistent basis, so I really do appreciate everyone who pledges even a single dollar each month. Patrons at any level gain access to my card by card grade spreadsheet for call time, so that's a nice little bonus if you do choose to become a patron. Without further ado though, let's get to the matches. Welcome to round one. On the play, this hand is fantastic. Just two drop, make another two one. Keep the pressure on them. They're mulliganing. If we really wanted to go aggro, we would not even make a two one, but I think the two one is like similar enough to the three two that it's worth just doing because it's a free resource. Volatile Fjord showing its worth here. Maybe I should have taken the second one because I was going to end up with a lot of playables. I think I probably could have justified that pick, but I wanted to try out the Mistwalker. Unfortunately, they've started off with a even better card than mine because it matches up so favorably. If 
So, so they'll end up up a 1-1 on the exchange, but I think it's still worth it to trade. Okay. And I got that out of their hand now. I'm going to play the Firewalker, and then next turn I'll flash this in. That's okay with me. If they don't attack, I'm fine. If they do attack, I'm fine. Really a win-win here. If they feed the serpent on this or something, then it doesn't work out as great. If they have another wings, it doesn't work out great. But it worked out perfectly. Next turn I can discard a land. Oh no, it didn't work out perfectly. A lot of lands here, but this card's going to draw us another card next turn, which is nice. We're keeping the pressure up decently. If we had one spell in our hand, I'd say we were winning. Given that we have a spell here, I'd say we're like pretty 50-50. Oh, we just get to suicide attack this in. Uh, I will decline. So first things first, we're going to attack. Beautiful. We'll just take the, the opportunity to use our free card. <sighs> oh no. Well, now they're not going to trade that off, so... I'm fine trading that off now. They don't have a token to sacrifice to that now. Oh my gosh, imagine how good that bounce effect would be here. I want to hold one land because I do have that Immersturm. I guess I shouldn't have played that land because my back, my curve tops at six and I have no card draw. Oh, they get to do it anyway. Okay, we'll do that. That was just a fancy way of making their 4-4. Four -four. But run ashore would be great here. Ooh, rune of speed, nice. I guess if we we did have card draw, so it was worth it to play the land. Ooh, that's good for us. Or maybe it's horribly, horribly wrong for us. Oh. Well, we need our, our uh, b bounce effect here. Like, put this on top, bounce that would be so good right now. So I think it is nice to have runner grounds in our deck. Can't attack. Just have to hope. Wait in top deck. We have two copies of that in our deck. That's our best draw. This holds back the Starnheim Coursers for now. We do make our run aground a lot worse by blocking like that. 
But we have only drawn land, so that's also a huge factor in this game. They've drawn six lands, and we've drawn about... Um... Ten. So, if we had two more spells... Okay, they've drawn seven. But if we had three more spells here, we would be pretty much in great shape. They block there. They have a 1-1. One, one. Oh, I messed up. I should have given this... You know, because then they can hit me unimpeded. This is good. That's about how they were expected to block. We need to top deck something, but we have good top decks. Oh. Okay. Send in the squad. Oh, they hold back. Interesting. Craven Hulk. Well, we're going to try our best here, but I don't know if it's enough. So they block here. They take four. They block here. They go to two. Yeah. Unfortunately, we top decked the Dwarven Hammer and Craven Hulk a turn too late. We were just short, but I don't think that was a uh, game plan flaw. That was more of a just uh, the way that the cards came uh, came through our deck. I think the deck is still pretty good, though. Um, would I make any changes? Let's see. It's always something that's important to look at. Um, if we had drawn one of our runner grounds that game, it would have been a huge difference maker. It probably would have even been better than the Behold the Multiverse would have been, so I'm actually okay not running Behold in this deck based on that criteria, because that's the card I would have swapped it in for. I liked my 4-4s my four would have been good. I think I had pretty good, like, I just didn't draw what I needed to draw. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how the deck looks. Um, that 4-4 four four was just a really good body they had in the air. They had the ability to make tokens to sacrifice to it fairly easily. Um, it was tricky. Very tricky. I maybe could have... What could I have done differently? What were the key decision points that I made that I could have done differently? Sometimes I have, like, gra like very vivid moments that I could have done differently. I think in that game, it was just, like, a matter of me not drawing the cards I needed. Um, I drew them in the wrong order. If I had, like, exiled, like, a creature instead of, like, my squash off of my the scary Firewalker, that would have been a lot better. But as it is, we have a nice hand here. We can foretell, then play Bloodline, and name... Probably we're going to still name Berserker, because it can grow over the course of the game. And we might, we might bra draw a Berserker in these first couple turns. But the ability to foretell on turn two is so powerful. Also keep in mind, we are playing against people who are generally going to be pretty solid. Ooh, we can even name Giant now. That's even better. Certainly going to do that now that I have two Giants in hand. Because that way I get immediately paid off for doing something I wanted to do anyway. Ooh, but now I have a Berserker in my hand. I'm going to go Giant. Because I'm going to play this next turn 100%. And then I can play this next turn after that. I can play these two if I don't draw an island for this. Oh, this card is terrible, I think. It just requires so much mana. It can't block either of my creatures right now. I have my 5-1. 
I could have played the Axe Guard and the Augury Raven there. It was a consideration. I just like to maximize my mana production. Berg Strider shirt. Just all mountains all the time. Unfortunate. So I can just hit them for five with this. So I can do this, equip that thing to it, haste it up. I'm still one damage short. I want to hold this in case I draw Immer Storm Raider. I'm just going to play this. I can always equip next turn. <sighs> Equipping would have just... It would have been slightly more mana efficient this turn, but I don't have anything to do with my mana next turn anyway. And this way I just have it in play. And my Axe Guard Cavalry, I could just put the thing on that. Morite of Frost, okay. That was one of the risks, but... Now they're just dead, I think. I don't think there's a card for a single white, except for the untapped card. Um, so I can put that on this guy. If they do have the wings card, it gets ugly for me. But they didn't. It's not the sort of card that you run in your five-color snow deck anyway, so I didn't really expect them to have it. But we got the win. Looks pretty good. And uh, see you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We will keep this on the play. Our Fearless Liberator could potentially do work again. Similar to the way it did, um, had potential to do previously. This card on the play is one of the reasons I took it. It just seems like it could be quite good. Maybe I don't want the giant equipment because I can just run... I already have two equipments. I forgot about the Dwarven Hammer when I was factoring in my like Rune of Speed calculations, but a 5 mana 4 or 5 isn't that good, and the equipment part isn't that good either, and the double blue is tricky for my deck, relatively speaking. Oh, gosh. Really? Well, shucks. Now they just have a free block on it, so I'm not going to attack in. We'll just play our Axe Guard Cavalry so that our Craven Hulk can attack next turn. Our opponents have done a good job blanking Fearless Liberator, so maybe it's not as good as I thought it would be. That being said, they did play a one-drop one of the times, like an uncommon one-drop, and this time they had their Code Spell Cleric stuff going. This is cute. They get to tap for a mana. I'm happy if I can kill their Jesper Sentinel. Oh, they don't do it. Nice. That's good for me. Maybe. Maybe it's terrible for me. I'm kind of afraid of what they're up to. For now, I think I'm just going to keep hasting out Craven Hulks, though. This also looks like a spot where run a ground would be run a shore would be pretty nice as a top end card. My next two turns are fairly scripted. Play this, give it haste, play this, give it haste, I think. Sure. And I'm actually gonna play the land because if I do top deck something relevant I could see doing that okay I 
And I do want to draw my run ashore, I think. My run aground or whatever. Hmm. Axe Guard Cavalry's been doing some serious work. Trading my 4-drop for their 4-drop seems okay to me. The Yara Glade Warden's a pretty good card. And I still hit them for 4, which is nice. So they get... 4 tokens. Oh. Well, they messed up. They should have gotten two more tokens, but they misclicked. We might, we're probably going to win because of that. Or if we win, it'll be because of that. If we lose, good on them, but that's a pretty major component of the card. Is the fact that you get two more tokens. Certainly makes my Craven Hulk much more intimidating as a ground attacker. My Augury Raven as a four, as a four-turn clock in the air is maybe going to be aided by another card now. Okay, so my Craven Hulk might not be able to attack anymore. I think I'll hold this land. My curve tops out at six, and I can discard it next turn. <sighs> if they attack, I can double block. It's a little bit ner nerve wracking because there is, I guess, plus one, plus three wouldn't save it. Plus four, plus four would, though. I'd be devastated. They have three cards in hand. I think they're all spells. I think they've missed land drops. But maybe that's a fiction. Oh yeah, it's bad for me. If that's their only attack, it's actually okay for me. Still bad, but because this thing is a house. They gain four. I might, I will say we have also drawn our fair share of lands here. I think I'm going to send in. Oops. Yeah, I lose. Um, yeah, I forgot that thing had reach. But regardless, I uh, was not going to win that game, I don't think. They had two more spells in their hand, and the shame scoop seemed like a reasonable response. <laughs> I just don't have cards to get me back in this sort of game. I can, like, one for one their guy, but they just have more spells to go. Let's see, do I want... I think I do want to make that one change to the deck and get rid of the giant amulet. If I have another aggressive card, I can put in. So let's see how we'd want to modify that. I will also say that we have drawn more than our fair share of lands. Especially considering that we have like Immersturm Raiders to like get rid of extra lands. We've still drawn a lot of lands. So we want to get rid of this giant amulet. What do we want to add instead? How many creatures do we have? 14 creatures plus the hammer is kind of a creature. So that's 15 creatures. Um, We've got some nice flyers. Lidyar Kin Seekers. How does that work? We have seven Berserkers, but that's a 3-5 when it comes in at its best. What about this card? This card can put extra lands into play, and it's a 4-4. But do we really care about extra lands is the question. And the answer is pretty much no. We don't really care about extra lands. Uh, we don't want Raven form because giving them an extra 1-1 one is not great. Um, so maybe Giant's Amulet is just the best option we have. We could also play like Gold Vein pick as just another like bad Tormentor sound, but I don't think we need to play a bad card. 
we could play Disdainful Stroke to stop them once we've gotten ahead on board. That has some implications. Or we could just put the Behold the Multiverse into our deck, because it'll probably be better than the Giant's Amulet. We could also just play Pilfering Hawk as a 2-mana 1-2 that it attacks and can wear an equipment. Mm. Behold probably isn't the best option, but I don't have great options. Gold Vein pick might be more in my deck's alley, but I don't think my deck really cares about that. I'm just going to try the Behold. We'll see how it would compare to a Gold Vein pick. My deck has kind of stalled the game out a couple times and tried to win with Flyers, and Behold can help in that situation. I think, regardless, the Behold is going to be better than the 4-4 Giant, potentially, I think. Because I don't really care about the Hexproof part of that card. Wow. Okay, so we've had Face Fearless Liberator in our opening hand every time. So this is at least a good case study for this card. Let's see if it can actually do something this game. Or if it just gets blanked again. We also are drawing Run Ashore for the first time, so that could be a nice little thing as well. So against a blue deck, if they're going to be foretelling stuff early, maybe the Fearless Liberator can get a hit in. But, you know, it hasn't really been doing much. But this is part of the cool thing about playing the format early on, is you get to see the sort of card and how it develops. Okay, so they don't have a 2-drop. And we play our Fearless Liberator. It's just the higher upside play than something like the Raven. If this turn is spent, like, foretelling something, or they play a creature that would trade with the Liberator, we just get a major advantage. So, this is where you hope for the best. Ice Mine Pillar, sure. We do want to draw a land coming up here. So, Pillar is going to be annoying. It's especially good against our equipment. So they frostbite it, but we still have a 2-1 behind, which is nice. Give me a land here. Come on, deck. Yes, that's huge. Target non-land permanent, so I can bounce their Ice Bind Pillar on a key turn. Just play my biggest creature every turn. Ah, Disdainful Stroke. No huge deal there. Okay, the pup does blank this Berserker. So no attacking into the pup. It's also really good against Dwarven Hammer, so I might even have to provoke the trolls it. One cool trick I could use is if I attack with the hammer and they block, I could then provoke the trolls on their pup. Ooh, then. Hmm. I'm just spending all my mana every turn, because I can use my mana pretty efficiently. One thing I will say is that they might go for the block on this, because it has first strike, and then I can provoke the trolls it. It'll die, and I'll deal the five trample, and they won't have tapped it with their pillar. They are stuck on three lands, so maybe they'll have to tap out, and I can just enact my game plan there. Or I could permanently get rid of the pillar. So they do have three mana up. They didn't choose to equip. Hmm. The longer that they go like this, the more I just want to play more of my spells out. So I'm just going to do this. Mistwalker, Raven. This is more mana efficient. I don't care. This will get a 3-3 three, three out. But this next turn will be more efficient then. And this might bait out a counter spell or something. I could see playing the Raven being correct there for sure. What do they have? They have a removal spell or something. They do. So I'm glad I didn't play the Raven. I not only saved my mana a little bit, conserving that, but I now have my Raven as an option for later. So they're going to foretell. That's huge for me now. Gives me a nice little attack here. And 
And then I'll play my Augury Raven post-combat. So I'll kill that. It lets this thing attack better in the future if they ever tap out and I get my Raven down. I was hoping to do the damage trick, but they tapped it down. They weren't falling for it. So what are they going to cast? If it's not a creature, if it is a creature, I can run ashore it and smack them for uh, 10. Oh, this is, that's game. Wow. Run ashore just being a beast. Okay, so I'm going to return the Yeti to their hand. Talk a permanent to put in its owner's library. And this goes to their hand. Wow, Run Ashore is just incredible right now. I've just been planning on it the whole game and it's just devastating them. So they kept it on top. And they're just dead. I'm just casting my spells to see like how my other cards would look. Oh, like this card's pretty good in this type of spot. We aren't going to suicide our guy, don't worry. Berserker would rather die in combat than go to a small victory. Okay, so what was the change that we had made? We added in... Behold. Behold would have been an okay draw there. Refill us up with gas, help us find our run ashores. But would have a giant would a giant token have been better? I don't know. A four or five for five is kind of expensive. But once you have five mana, would you rather have that effect? I could also just play Undersea Invader as a big creature. It's like a it's not really an ambusher though. Which is kind of the big pull towards that sort of card. I think I'm just gonna run it back. The deck's 2-2. Two and two. I think it's underperformed based on what it could be. Uh, but it's hard to say how good a deck is when it's still early on in a format. Like, the, the deck could just be very medium. Uh, one thing is it doesn't really maximize on the Cosmic Charger angle of attack. I go first. I have so many blue cards I have to cast, but Mulliganing is so bad. And if I draw one island, I'm pretty golden. I have a couple Immer Sturm Raiders that could help this hand get better. A lot of my blue cards have Fortell. I'm going to keep. I have like four draw steps. And even though I only have, I think I ran nine sevens, I still have eight blue sources. This is a good draw, too. Swimlane Barbarian. I mean Berserker. I don't know why I always say Barbarian. We have five Berserkers left in the deck and one of them in our hand because of this Mistwalker. So they're just playing three colors. Okay. I'll fall for your gambit, buddy. And they didn't understand how Fearless Pup worked. Well, that was a gift of a game. My hand was not coming together at all. Maybe I wasn't supposed to keep it, but I really don't like mulliganing. I think one of the things I've re read is that with the old mulligan rule, your win percentage would decline like 10% or something every time you mulligan, but from seven to six. I'm not sure if it's the same with the new mulligan rules where you like put a card back after you draw seven. But I will also say that when your deck is kind of iffy like mine is, or it's like needs a little bit of help anyway, you t tend to want to be more 
risky, like m keep riskier hands slightly because you don't want to, you don't have the two, like if your deck is on six cards, it just doesn't have the raw power level to like push through. Like I don't have some crazy bomb that's going to win me the game. So I can hopefully use my Cosmos Charger to eat their creature on turn three and then play a Craven Hulk to follow it up and start beating them down. So this is a great hand, all things considered. This is one of the most powerful things my deck can do. Knowing that is really nice for mulligan decisions. And now we even have this Tormentor's Helm, which can get us through a little for a little bit of extra damage over the course of the game. It'll be nice to see how this performs. It's really good with the Rune of Haste. And that land is a good insurance policy. Unfortunately, they didn't play a 2-drop there, but we're still going to be okay. They have two Snowlands already. Okie doke, Agar the Frost Flame. So I think we will flash this into trade with that guy. And then just start jamming Craven Hulks, Craven Hulk, and then Craven Hulk plus equip. This does work out poorly for us if they have a deal for or a run amok or something. But I think getting this trade off would be really good for us. Agar is just terrifying. Ouch. Wow. That's brutal. Unfortunate. They were going to have that no matter what we played, though. Their, our draw didn't line up very well against Terra's, unfortunately. They have really good removal spells for our guy. We don't have a cheap removal spell for Agar. This card thrives when they attack in with, like, a 2-2. Two -two. But Agar was high enough priority that he was worth, like, trading for, and then they killed it. And it's really awkward for us. Okay, so I can Immersturm Raider plus Squash. I'm actually going to ditch the Volatile Fjord, because this way I can get an equip in on my Tormentor's Helm. I'm going to squash this. They are on a four turn clock there. And the Haggai mob, we did get a lot of tempo back there. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be, uh, I mean, I guess they're at 15, they're going to be at 10 next turn if they take the hit from this. They're playing green spells too. Wow, this is just bizarre. Their deck is just so strange. Once again, we're flooding out a little bit. We'll split up the power and toughness a little bit more. This way we can... Mm. We're hoping to double block the Lindworm. Unfortunately, their deck doesn't seem... I mean, their deck doesn't seem great to me. Provoke the Trolls. Yeah, we'll kill the Agar while we have the chance. We have another Ibmer Sturm, so we'll hold this. I mean, when we think about it, the um, hmm. if we did draw, oh, I didn't even notice that they had that. If we did draw our sh run aground, it would be really good here. Put this on top, bounce this, attack them for a lot. They're out of gas, but we don't have anything right now either. We have some good top decks, though. Oh, that's good for us. Trading a 4-4 four four for their 6-6 six six is great. Whenever you can trade up on stats, strongly consider it. Oh, good joke.
Like, we are fine trading these off. If they attack here, we'll double block and they'll trade a 2 1 for a 4 4. And we have Runner Ground in our deck as one of our best possible draws. Oh my gosh. Just unreal. Could we just catch a break or draw one of our good cards for once? We're just dead now, right? Huh, they didn't attack. Well, I think our best chance of winning is them not knowing how my cards work. Which is never really where you want to be. Because I'm dead on board now. But they don't know that. It would seem. Also, once again, we just kind of flooded out, which is kind of just unlucky. I think this deck could have performed a lot better. We literally can't block. I don't think we have any outs, really. Yeah. Yeah, our deck just drew a lot of lands. Um, we even discarded a couple of our lands. Um, how did this one land get... I know we discarded this Volatile. How did we get rid of this island? Oh, no, they killed it. Yeah. So they killed one of our lands. We discarded a land, and we still have eight lands. So, yeah. It's just hard to win when that happens. Their deck may look like it has more lands, but they also, like, searched up a land. They play, like... I don't know, they've also drawn more cards, they're 22. I guess we're at the same depth to the deck. Because of our raider that discarded one of our lands. But they also sacked a land, so they had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They've had a good number of lands, too. Just feels like, uh... They've gotten more value out of their cards or something. And that, yeah, our deck really doesn't handle flooding very well. Interesting draft, though. Getting to experiment with some of those cards was neat. Um... I think the Immersturm Raiders were okay because they really made it harder to flood out even though we tended to flood out anyway. But if our deck had drawn like two more spells per game, I think we would have been in great shape. Like if we had, draw had a run around in our hand for when they had a troll, it would have been wild. So three and three with this deck. Honestly, not too unhappy with that performance. Our deck kind of didn't have a great identity. Uh, its problem was that we had... We didn't have every card on the beat them down plan. And so that when we had to play like a card like Behold in our deck, which didn't fit perfectly. I think ideally also this deck would run like, it has to run 17 because it has such expensive cards at the top end. But I think we did a pretty good job of identifying cards that the deck didn't really care about as much. Like Giant Amulet, kind of hard to cast at double blue on five drop, a five drop. The Hexproof isn't going to matter as much, so it's like a worse version of Grizzled Outrider in our deck a lot of the time. And we already have two equipments to maximize our Rune of Speed. Um, Depart the Realm isn't necessary when we have Run Ashore, and I think Run Ashore actually has potential in this sort of deck as a card that you actively want, because we kept wanting to draw it, and that's a good indication. Um, I think we did a good job like not getting too hyper-focused on trying to draft Snow cards. Raven Form would not have been good in our deck due to our X1s. Uh, Raiders Carved I don't think would have been good either. Let's look at some of the cards in our deck. I will say Immersturm Raider was okay. It often traded for a 1-1, one, one, which is kind of bad, so this card's not going to go up in my pick order. It's probably going to go down a little bit because it wasn't a card I was happy with. On the other hand, Axe Guard Cavalry, especially facilitating like Craven Hulk attacks, is really nice. Dwarven Hammer continues to go up for me. This card has been absolutely great every time I've had it. It always seems to win me the game when I cast it. Just absolutely fantastic card we didn't get to see how good mist walker would have been uh but i don't think the card would have been that good in the hand that we had it so do that what you will i think i would have rather had a dual land to make my mana a little bit better which is what i took it over uh the helm could have been good in that one hand if we had curved out a little bit better um and yeah that's most of the cards cosmos charger was kind of underwhelming it didn't really do much it oftentimes just traded with a 3-3 on defense but it has a higher upside than that we just didn't really have a good deck for it um but yeah, that is going to do it for this draft video. If you made it all the way till the end of the video, remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with your questions, your feedback, your thoughts on the deck, the draft. Would you have stayed open to going into red when you got that Dwarven Hammer, or would you have committed to going to black, blue, snow? It might have worked out for you, given that we saw like a Narfi Betrayer King late in uh, pack three, so maybe blue, black, snow could have worked out. Uh, I just liked this approach better. It looked like red was pretty open for us as well. Uh, 
Also, if you did make it all the way to the end of the video and this little outro thing, leave hashtag running. Um, hmm. I was going to do some pun with running ashore and like flooding. Oh, hmm. Because you run ashore when your boat flood when the when there's high tide, like in your boat floods. So leave a hashtag run ashore because of high tide to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. <laughs> kind of a funny one, but you know. You do what you can with these hashtags. Got to be creative. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Or you can leave hashtag that hashtag was too long because it's kind of funny. You can also support me directly, as I said at the beginning of the video, via Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Gain access to my card-by-card -card grade spreadsheet uh, and just help me continue making videos. Uh, you can also um, support my content by subscribing to my Twitch channel. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel at no extra cost to yourself. You just link the two accounts and then you can subscribe for free because Amazon owns Twitch. And so they give you a free subscription every single month. So if you've used it in the past month, uh, you can use it again next month. And it's really cool. Um, you can also read my articles, linked in the description. Join the free Nikolai Bolas community Discord server, linked in the description and pinned comment and all of that good stuff as well. Um, also, there's the call time achievement list, which is a pinned tweet on my Twitter right now. Uh, I don't really use Twitter. I just have it for like when I post videos and for this call time achievements thing. So send your screenshots of if you accomplish any of the fun achievements or post them in the achievements section of the Discord. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, leave hashtag secret outro too, because that's the second time I've done a secret outro thing uh, for a hashtag. But because uh, it is interesting to see who makes it all the way to the very end. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you next time.